Hi guys, it's Kelsey here. Welcome back to my channel. If you are new to my channel, um, welcome and subscribe because you don't want to miss a video. That's a long word. <laughs> If you are joining me for the first time, my name is Kelsey. My wife Vanessa and I have been trying to conceive for the past two years, and we are finally doing IVF. Okay, guys, so I have officially started IVF. So the last video that you guys might have seen was me going in to get my testing done, my blood work done, to see where in my cycle we were at, to see whether we could start IVF, and they called me back a few days later and let me know that my blood levels were good for us to go ahead and start birth control. So we got the prescription for the birth control and I'm supposed to take the birth control for 14 days and then I'll have two days off from the birth control and then I will go right into the injection schedule. So they've sent me a calendar and everything so that I know like what meds I'm going to be taking and what days I'm taking the birth control and all of that. Um, so that was basically the, the first thing that happened was just getting that birth control prescription and I started taking that that very same day. I also got my calendar. It shows basically what medications I'm going to be taking and when. And also I had to go on and sign a pretty thick packet of like consent forms and information and stuff. So. Um, what I'm going to do in this video is actually explain the process of IVF. I know that many of my subscribers know exactly what IVF is or at least some part of it um, because they are in this trying to conceive world. However, some of my subscribers and some of my family and friends probably won't be as familiar with the IVF process. And so that's why I'm going to actually like explain all of the steps um, involved and basically what I'm going to be starting and what I'm going to be going through. So the first thing to know is that IVF stands for in vitro fertilization. I will try to have some definitions right below as I'm explaining some things um, just to help out with some of the words. But yeah, the process is called IVF and that's what it stands for. So step one of the process is usually they will start you off on birth control and or some other hormone medication similar to birth control and this is for a few reasons. One is that it helps prevent um, ovarian cysts and then another reason is to really get those hormone levels where they want them to be so that they can time things exact because they are creating a schedule um, of days for your medications and it's all like very exact precise timing. Oh, I also want to say that I am explaining this stuff to the best of my knowledge and the best of my ability, but I am not a medical professional. I am not a scientist and I am not like a research expert. I am just someone who's going through this and I'm going to try to explain this as best as I can. So that's usually the first part of it and then comes the injection and boost medication part and this is actually growing eggs. So normally in a woman's cycle she will produce one egg she'll grow one egg she'll ovulate that one egg and that's her like ovulation window to where she could get pregnant with her one egg in a few in sometimes there's twins and she's ovulated too but for the majority a woman will ovulate one egg a month with IVF the point is not to only have one egg because then you only have one shot the point is to have so many eggs, like a lot of eggs. Um, 
I don't really know how many, but maybe like anywhere from like seven to like 25, maybe more, maybe less, but somewhere around like a lot of eggs. So the reason that they're doing that is so that they can eventually pull all those eggs out fertilize all those eggs and have so many more chances that you'll actually get pregnant or conceive. So during this egg growing part of IVF, you will be using a boost injection medication, which is sometimes like Menopure or Gonal F, um, but basically something like that to where you are stimulating your ovaries to overproduce and grow a lot a lot of eggs and you're doing this at a at timed points in the day every day for you know several days and weeks and um, in the hopes that you will grow in both sides of your ovaries multiple eggs and at that time um, they will be monitoring you and checking you and seeing the growth and how many are growing and tracking all of that and they're adjusting those medications based on what they're seeing so if they need to increase more boost medications or they need to lower it down you know everything's very like um scientific so you're seeing the the doctors often like daily sometimes to get blood work done or ultrasounds done and stuff like that during this egg growing phase um, something else that they really want to be careful of is because they're growing so many eggs at one time they want to make sure that your body doesn't start to release and ovulate all of those eggs before they're ready because they need them to stay put so that they can take them when they're ready so they will then start to use a different injection medication I believe the one that i'll be using is called ganarelix and this medication will help to make it so that you your body doesn't start to just ovulate these eggs out and get them out of your ovaries so at a certain point in the and the prescription or in the medication lineup all of a sudden you'll be adding on this extra injection medication so one's to grow a lot of eggs and one is to keep those eggs put and not to ovulate those eggs out and during this time they're going to check in via ultrasound and look at the ovaries and measure the size of all the follicles the follicle is what grows it's like the membrane of sac thing around the egg that's inside and they measure that to know when the when those follicles or those eggs are mature they want to pull them out at an exact size and exact measurement so they know that they're mature so after they've grown all the eggs there's another injection medication called a trigger shot and the trigger shot actually tells your body to start releasing those eggs to start to ovulate it's then after that trigger shot about 34 to 36 hours where they do the next step in the process which is the egg retrieval step they will either put you under anesthesia or you'll have a spinal to where you can't feel anything and they will go in guided with a ultrasound they'll take a needle they'll go through the vaginal wall they'll go directly into each of the ovaries and they will pull out all of the eggs so now the eggs are outside of the woman's body and that procedure egg retrieval is considered a minor surgical procedure they say that it lasts about an hour and that you'll need to stay and like recover for about an hour afterwards. It says here, following the egg retrieval, the eggs will be inseminated with sperm after two to six days, the appropriate number of embryos will be transferred back in. So once all the eggs are outside of the woman's body, they then have to inseminate each of those eggs. They can do that one of two ways. They can either put an egg in like a Petri dish, 
put some sperm around it and let the sperm find the egg naturally. Or they can do a different process, which is called ICSI, which is where fertilization is achieved by injecting a single sperm into a single egg. So they'll actually take one single sperm with that one egg and they will manually with a needle inject that one sperm into there. They do that for a few reasons, some of which are male factor infertility, where the sperm don't know where they're going or something of that nature, low mobility, um, things like that. So I'm not sure what they will do, but I'm sure they'll probably do um, maybe a little bit of both where they do some ICSIs and some they just let the sperm find them naturally. So then once all of those eggs have been inseminated with the sperm, they are now considered to be embryos. Over the next two to six days, they are watching those embryos grow and they're watching those embryos um, go through cell division to where each day they're dividing more and more and more and um, they're basically just continuing to grow as if they would when they were inside. They're checking and monitoring those embryos to see if they're still viable. If there's some that stop dividing and are not um, looking like they're continuing to grow, they're no longer viable and they're no longer going to be used in the process. So they're figuring out which ones are good and which ones are bad. And then from the bunch that you have that are good quality um, embryos, they will choose of those, however many you have, they will choose how many to put back inside the woman. And that will be what is called a transfer. Okay, so then once all of your embryos are at a good growth rate and they all they look viable, they will choose how many to put back inside. So it says here that the number of embryos returned into the uterus is based upon several factors, including maternal age and embryo quality. So the number reflects an effort to optimize the chance of pregnancy while minimizing the risk of high order multiples. We also understand that in most cases, two or more embryos will be returned to the uterus. So basically what that means is that they want to put two or more eggs back in. They don't want to put too many to where you have like quadruplets or quintuplets or septuplets. They want to avoid high order multiples, which is multiples of like triplets or more. But they also want to give you a good chance that one of them will stick. So by putting a few in, you have a better chance that at least one of those embryos will stick to the lining of the uterus, hang on tight and will grow and become a baby. There is another thing that they warn you of or make you sign off on, and it is something called multi-fetal reduction. So in the event that there are three, four, or more implanted, so that means that if like three of the embryos actually implant, and so now you have triplets or quadruplets, um, or five in there, or however many, um, they will do something called a multi-fetal reduction. It may be recommended to preserve the health of the mother or the fetus, fetuses. So in that, if you were to get pregnant with like five babies, then they could go in and actually reduce the number of growing embryos in there so that they will reduce it down to say maybe just twins or just a singleton pregnancy, hoping that less babies growing will mean less health risks for the mom and the babies. Um, I was told by my doctor, and I don't know if this figure is correct, that that only needs to happen about 1% of the time. So it's not very common or very often that that needs to happen. And I think the reason is because they are now more restrictive with how many they're putting back in, they're transferring back in. Um, but it is something that we have to sign off on and it's something that we're made aware of. And so, um, yeah. 
So there are two different types of transfers that can happen. One is called a fresh transfer and one is a frozen transfer. So a fresh transfer means that as soon as those embryos are, are finished growing, like the two to five days or however many days, as soon as they're ready, they'll transfer them immediately back in. And that's called a fresh transfer. There's another kind of transfer that's a frozen transfer where all of the eggs that weren't transferred right back in fresh will be frozen so that they can be used in later transfer dates. So when they take those frozen embryos and transfer those in, that's called a frozen transfer. So you can either choose to like right away get those embryos transferred in and do a fresh one, or you could choose to just wait and go for frozen, or you could do a fresh and then have to continue with transfers of frozen embryos. So one thing that we have to like decide on and, um, sign off on is what we're going to do with all the rest of the embryos that aren't being transferred back in. So we decided that em any embryos that don't get a fresh transfer back in will be frozen for frozen transfers later or um, siblings later down the line. Um, however, something I wasn't aware of is the fact that is the fact that they only keep those frozen embryos for four years. And if you don't transfer them back in or use them within the four years, you have to decide to destroy them or donate them. And when they say donate them, they mean donate to science, not to another couple. Um, and those are your options. So you use them or you lose them pretty much. So that's, you know, not always an easy decision for couples to make. Um, so yeah. So basically, once, so after transfer day, where they, you know, either do a fresh transfer or a frozen transfer of however many embryos back into the woman's uterus, then technically you're pregnant. But it takes like a few days after that, like several days after that, before you're actually like officially pregnant because the egg has to attach to the wall. And it's once that egg attaches to the wall of the uterus that your body starts, <laughs> that your body starts producing the HCG hormone, which is the human chorionic gonadotropin hormone, which is the pregnancy hormone. So pretty shortly, like after transfer, you can tr figure out like if you're pregnant or not. Um, so hopefully we won't have to wait a full two weeks to find out. And hopefully everything will go as planned and it will go smooth on our first fresh transfer. So yeah, I hope that was helpful to some people um, explaining the process. Again, I did my best. I'm not like a medical expert or anything like that. I just kind of went with what I know about it and what I've learned about it. Um, if you have any questions, you can let me know down in the comments below. And other than that, yeah, just wish us luck. And we're very excited to get things started. I will have more videos coming soon with my appointments and my medication and everything that I'm going through. So stay tuned for those and I can't wait to see you guys in my next video. Bye guys.